Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. We recently covered the logarithmic, logarithmic regression ban for Bitcoin, and I just wanted to, to cover the one for the entire cryptocurrency market capitalization. Uh, I know people were asking for this. So um, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you, if you guys like the content. Uh, sorry if this is a little redundant um, because it's more or less going to be similar to Bitcoin considering it does take up a huge portion of the overall market capitalization. Um, but not, nevertheless, we are still going to press forward. So one of the things um, you know, we've talked about is this band fit to non-bubble data, and we did it for the total cryptocurrency market cap. Now, I also have made a, a chart that is more of a fair valuation one, which more kind of goes through, through this region, so we can kind of see the over-under on, on the valuation and looking to see how far under we are and I'll probably make a video about, about that in a few days but for now we're just going to be looking at with respect to this to this band here and actually we've looked at you know error from the price to the lower band as well and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes um, but this was what the total cryptocurrency market cap looked like in uh, just a few weeks ago okay and we've updated it now Okay, so this is what it looks like now. So clearly, um, we have come to the very bottom of the band, and that is not to say that we cannot go outside the band. We know that with logarithmic regression fits, you know, they're, they're only good for, you know, the short term in terms of market cycle bottoms. Like, if we were already on our move, on our move up, then we would know, we could tell that when we were in a bubble. However, because we're in this region here, and each cycle, the, the, the logarithmic regression fit would come down. So again, if we were just to fit it to this data, it would, it would look something like that. If it had just been this data, it would look something like this. With this three sets of data, it would, you know, it would look, well, and the, and the, well with just these three, it would, it would go higher. And then with four, we're coming you know, right through here. So clearly, if I were to re-optimize this with the new data, over here, it would it would push the push the band down a little bit because there's going to be um, uh, some more data in this region and it would likely pull it down. Um, but I don't think it would actually pull it down that significantly to make a huge noticeable difference to your eye. Um, uh, but anyways, just know that that's the case. And if we were to spend a long time, say in this region over here then it might be prudent to refit it to better identify the next, say, the peak of the next bubble, just to get a better idea. But with that said, um, you know, this was fit without this data. You can see that I used that point right there, but that was it, or maybe a few points in here, but not, not in this region that we've currently gone to. Um, and historically, we've, we've been in this region before. We've been in the lower half of this band before, we were in it in 2015 and 2016. So this isn't exactly new. It just took us a longer period of time to get there in this cycle. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to speculate, or I, 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 will, I will speculate, I guess. Um, you know, there's a chance we could easily fall below this band. I'm not saying we can't by any means. Uh, the, the point is to just show the macro level picture of seeing that we have been in the lower part of the band before. Um, and spent a long time there. One of the things we've talked about before is the fact that we really didn't spend much time in this band when we when we peaked out of it. And and when we peaked out of the band, the risk level had hit like 0.6 or 0.7 for for Bitcoin. Um, and so, looking back over here from the last market cycle, it was you know we were saying, well, why didn't we spend more time in the band? And you can tell we were only above it for a little a, a small period of time, and we've come back down to the bottom. And you can imagine staying in this band, uh, even let's say let's say a even a bullish scenario where 3,700 was the bottom, um, which this is more daily data, not not minute data. So this would show uh, a higher number than 3,700. But even if even if that were the bottom, and we were to tick up for a long time, you know we still might be in this band for uh, the next couple years, and we might not get to a a say base fair valuation of the total cryptocurrency market cap um, of of say one trillion dollars until you know the middle of 2022 
uh, I, you know, I, I tend to think that the next peak will occur around 10, uh, 10 trillion dollars plus or minus a couple trillion. Well, it's a few trillion among friends. Um, but the, the way that we get there is, is going to be interesting. Because um, there's a number of scenarios you can imagine. You can imagine us staying in this band for several years and then peaking above it, but obviously only going to this line um, because we know that the difference between the peak and the band is getting lower and lower each time. We'll show that in a minute. Um, and uh, so that's one option. Another option is maybe we'll maybe we'll rebound um, immediately and then and then continue up. Uh, you know, with with the impending in, in global um, pullback and potentially a global recession uh, you know I'm, I'm not as bullish in the short term but that doesn't mean that you know this is necessarily a bad time to, to start dollar cost averaging because we do know the risk levels are low however because Bitcoin has never gone through a recession it you know it could the risk levels could remain lower for a, a much longer period of time than they ever have before it just depends on you know to some degree how long the economy is going to take to get back moving again, because you know where I live, where a lot of my friends live, I'm in I'm in the states, and a lot of people here, you know, they're being sent home. Schools are closing, a lot of small businesses are going out of business, and so if people aren't bringing in money, then they're going to have less disposable income to spend on things like cryptocurrency. Um, so just keep that in mind. So. Another idea would be if, you know, if, if really we were to go into a, a really bad recession, then it, it would not be hard to imagine coming below this line um, and then, you know, regaining, uh, regaining entry into it uh, down the road. Um, so that would, that would be, I would say, a very bearish scenario, you know, depending on, on how, how far this, this virus takes us and how much it affects the economy. And we actually do have some videos covering the virus and the growth rate. If you guys want to check those out, we have three of them. Check out the, the videos um, in the channel. And you can see those if you want some quick stats. The doubling rate, not including China, is around every four to five days, meaning the number of confirmed cases. Uh, clearly, this would be a lower bound because not everyone has been tested, but the number of confirmed cases is doubling every four to five days. And we've fit this to exponential fits and extrapolated. And while it's dubious to extrapolate, it, the extrapolation has been spot on for the last four to five days. And if we continue at this rate, then we're going to get to a million cases by the end of March and potentially 10 million cases by mid-April. Now, obviously, the goal is to flatten the curve and to delay the peak for as long as possible, which can make a huge, have a huge effect on the economy if we can do that because we can take away some of that burden on the hospitals. Um, which will be better care for people that are getting the virus. Um, but uh, it's a bit of a tangent. Um, and I should mention, if you guys like this content, then please check out this Telegram channel here. Um, we, we post a lot of graphs in there, and we have over 2,000. We have 2,100 people almost, and we just opened up a application for the second admin of the channel. So if you want to check that out, oh, and we also have a logo design competition. If you want to join the, if you want to have a chance of getting invited to the premium channel, but don't want to um, uh, potentially pay, you could pay by spending your time designing a logo. And if yours, if your logo wins the contest, then you'll be invited to the private channel for a year, um, which is uh, at the current valuation that would be worth six hundred dollars. Um, so please consider that if you're a graphic designer and you have some good ideas for a logo for this channel. Um, now, if we if we look at the the valuation compared to this bottom regression line, then this is what it looks like. So you can see that each peak, you know, we're moving through time, 2010, 20, you know, 15, 2020. Each peak is getting lower and lower, meaning each time that we peak here, we're getting closer and closer to the to the bottom of the band. So the volatility on a macro scale is decreasing. Clearly, we've had days where the volatility is still high. I mean, we had a 50% loss in one day with Bitcoin. Uh, well, by the end of the day, it wasn't quite 50%, but we, we've seen levels of volatility um, recently that we hadn't seen in a long time in a single day. But we're talking about macro level volatility. Um, we would expect the next peak to be closer to the band. And if the peak were to occur and say, you know, I, you know, I typically give a, 
I, I typically say say end of 2022 to 2023, sometime in that in that time range. So maybe a year, maybe even plus or minus um, uh, six months. So if you were to say like a year plus or minus six months, you could say um, 2023 plus or minus uh, or middle of 2023 plus or minus six months or, or something like that to get a, a vague idea of when I think the next peak will be. Um, so sometime out over here, okay? And, and when we get there, if, if we do peak at, you know, at $10 trillion or so, you can see that we're going to be closer to the band than we were over here and over here and over here. And you can also see that you know, each time uh, that we get close to the band during the bear market, if we go back, you can see we get to within, say, 1%. Here, if you were to zoom in, it actually goes slightly below it. Um, so even, you know, even over here, we actually have gone slightly below this tolerance region. Um, but again, you know, what's a few million among friends? <laughs> um, and uh, if you look, you can see that recently we have come back down. We're getting really close to that, you know, to that bottom band there. And in fact, if, if this had minutely data of, say, the 300-week moving average, which is where we hit a few days ago, then it, it would be there. It would be at around um, 1% uh, of the, the bottom of the band. Um, so clearly you can see we're on our way there. We didn't come close to getting to that last time um, back in uh, end of 2018, 2019. But now, you know, Bitcoin, it, it did say, you know, we, we get there every cycle and we're going to get there again. Um, so it looks like it's, you know, it's getting pretty close. I mean, you know, if this is 1%, this is, you know, it's already say 4%. So it only is a few percentage points away. Um, so, I mean, that's definitely within a, a say error bar or standard deviation already. Um, so I hope you guys like this content. This is, you know, it's more or less meant to be, uh, informative for those who are looking at macro level views not day traders. So if you're if you're more of the macro level person, you just want to look at, you know, overall good times to enter the market and overall good times to exit the market. So not only dollar cost averaging your buys, but dollar cost averaging your sells and potentially doing that dynamically and not statically, then at least check out the public channel. And if you want uh, premium content, more access, uh, check out patreon.com slash into the cryptoverse and you can find various tiers with, with different perks and, and obviously you can just sign up for this first tier if you want a lot of these updates with macro level analysis, risk updates, and a patron only chat room as well as a subscription to this uh, research report on Bitcoin that was published in January, the next one will be published in April and then you can, I'll let you read about the other tiers if you, if you want to. Um, but that'll, that'll wrap it up for this time, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. And uh, again, please at least subscribe to the, to the channel if you want to remain informed over the next several years. Uh, you can at least keep me honest. Uh, we're either going to see this stuff work out over the next, say, two to three years, or it's, it's not, and then you guys can call me out on it. Um, so it's all here. It's all public. You can find the information. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.